hey guys and welcome back to another video today we have a video that was released a month ago by buzzcut psycho and to be honest i was meaning to get to this video but we covered this subject with a space coded video and then i kind of forgot about it but i was always planning to revisit this one and i've decided uh this will be the one so uh the title is meta gaming mass reports pvp and the dev tightrope walk all of those aspects definitely hit my type of content the meta gaming aspect i'm very understanding of given i run a pretty competitive and seriously large pvp organization the mass reports definitely have a history when it comes to that definitely been a victim of that um the pvp uh, obviously you guys know and uh the involvement of the devs so looking forward to this video i think it's right up my alley and uh it's a long one so let's just dig in earlier this year in star citizen there was an organized attack by a group of players on an event known as the experience for those of you who do not know the experience is a public event where players board an origin 890 jump and go on a guided tour around stanton while this type of thing isn't what i play the game for I can respect the effort and dedication to organizing the event. I can also respect the dedication of those who went on to attack and interrupt said event. That is what- If mine is- I, I think I spoke to Buzz about this off stream, but he mentioned like and showed me I think a video of him uh, attacking an event that was run by the community of planet side. So I know this is uh, up his alley make star citizen a true open world danger risk reward and the narratives that result from those things you simply cannot get these stories from instance-based modern mmos which are more akin to single player games with chat rooms instead of true mmos it's true like i'm so, i'm here because it's an open world sandbox yeah like at the mercy of the community and you can make of it what you will uh, I like the idea of, you know, sharing a multiplayer game with all types of players uh, on a large scale and for the narrative to not only be controlled by the developers, but also the players and what they make of it, you know, like organizations going head to head, all that stuff that's notorious in open world sandbox games uh and you know that narrative storyline aspect to what goes on and then being able to impact that. And what he's referring to is like those dungeon crawler games where it's like, you know, you run a typical dungeon composition and then you go play it with some friends and most of your experience is jumping from instance to instance, shard to shard. Uh, there's no real sense of community or sandbox. So those reasons are exactly why I am playing Star Citizen amongst some others, which I'm sure I'll get to. Uh, but that's the beauty of a sandbox game, yeah? Um, an open world sandbox. This attack understandably caused <laughs> outrage within the community, and the participants in the attack received suspensions, warnings, and possibly more punishments from CIG. This prompted... The problem with the, the group that attacked the event is they were they're very much the boy who cried wolf. They attacked the event the first time, and uh, they've been attacking, like all they do is attack events really. Um, but they've been attacking these events pretty relentlessly of groups that aren't interested. But the problem is, is these guys are also guilty of so much more other shit. Like these dudes have been speed running suspensions and bans in the game as hard as they can. Like their entire purpose of their org is to push and often cross the line as frequently as possible and like some of those players my understanding is they're like speed running suspensions i've seen like so many of those guys just blatantly stream sniping guys who have zero interest in pvp that are like mining in the middle of nowhere um you know and they have like real life drama with a lot of these like content creators um that goes way beyond the game like it's just like weird weird stuff um and i just like don't care like they got warned three days before they attacked the event they did it anyway knowing that crg like warned them off so like how can i you know feel for those guys um when they don't care about the project if anything they're notoriously known for not caring about the project um 
And like I mentioned, the speedrunning bans, I don't see them involved in PvP in any serious aspect. Um, like, they're not out there competing. Uh, they're just trying to, like, torment these guys that aren't interested in PvPing or competing. Which I don't think those guys should be immune, but, you know, if that's all you can bring to the table, you know, why bother? You know, I don't care if guys that are trying to get suspended end up getting suspended. So, and uh, I know they're about to mention the thread, so let's see. A massive forum thread where PvP players were asking for clarity, which did eventually get a response from CIG. And if for anyone that's not familiar with the thread, it's like all the organization leaders banding together to get clarity from CIG on the rules. Do I think clarity needs to exist? Absolutely it does. Do I think we need transparency on where the rules are? Like, yeah, that's how you decide what things are legal and what things are illegal. So I agree with the movement, right? Like we do need to know exactly where the line is so we don't cross it. We know stream sniping's crossing the line, but then people in this organization just do it anyways, all the time. So, you know, what can you do to help them? Uh, and then, uh, excessive griefing when it becomes harassment. So like if you're constantly going after the same people and they're making an effort to get away from you, example being server hopping away, you can't harass them by chasing them to another server and follow them, them in, following them around instance to instance, region to region from like USA to EU, etc., to torment them. It's pretty easy rules like do i think there's like war circumstances like organizations going to war like should they be immune to it no like so i don't like that air gray area aspect of these rules um but it's been pretty easy for the last five years to play within the rules that they've designed uh and trust me i play an organization that very much reminiscent of the death eaters in the harry potter story and we have found it quite easy to stay within the rules and be should mention too, we got warned about how we were PVPing way back in the day. I think it was 2020 or 2021. Um, but I felt like we've been in good hands. Now I didn't sign this thread uh, or get behind this movement for this clarity because I knew that this wasn't about actually getting clarity. It was about stirring up some drama with, the developers that and the support team at CIG uh, just in the name of an organization that we know break the rules anyways. Um, I'm sure they're going to mention the thread pretty shortly. Uh, so let's get into that. The thread. There we go. On February 8th, 2024, a thread titled Metagaming, Player Organized Events and Organized Warfare was created which went on to request quote unquote clarity from CIG for what does and does not constitute acceptable PVP within the game. They cited a thread made on March 2nd, 2020 by Xylo, which states several of the following things. For a majority of these matters, a PVP solution is preferable. Frequently, when these scenarios was very are involved us, with, uh, we encourage those who feel they are being targeted. I was very involved, and so was our organization, because we used to play with a group called Smiling Dog Crew, which were pretty heavy on the griefing, tormenting side uh, of Star Citizen, and largely to do with the reason this thread and these rules got created. Um, we used to have a bad and, and good relationship with them at the same time. Uh, so pretty heavily involved with like this thread and its creation back in the day. You know, there was a podcast, Assaulty Mike, where we were discussed it. There were Twitter threads going between us and the community managers um, and stuff like this. So I'm very familiar with this thread and uh, the rules that came out of it. To rally with their friends and orgs in an attempt to fight back. We are not here to protect players from aggressors, pirates, and PVPers. A big part of Star Citizen is about that dichotomy, that epic clash that occurs when opposing forces meet and rally others to their cause. The wars that jump town were a prime example of the exciting emerging gameplay that can blossom when a lawful player comes face to face with an outlaw. That is then followed by, 
However, there is a line that is occasionally crossed where players are going outside the bounds of immersing themselves as a pirate slash PvPer. Some users are going out of their way to leverage live streams and other mediums to excessively grief. Yeah, so like if you're leveraging live streams to stream sniping, other mediums being like stalking people on Discord and shit like that to not just grieve, but excessively grieve, which is where these guys got their suspensions, right? Like they leverage live streams all the time. Um, like always see them tormenting some poor two viewer, three viewer guy on Twitch. Um, and then they're like planting accounts inside of player or content creator events. Uh, and then they're just trying to grief the events as hard as they can um, doing so. So it's like they ticked every box. It's so obvious. And the thing is too, is like, I don't, do I think it, events should be able to get attacked? Absolutely they should. But like the guys that did attack these events and are attacking these events, are just guilty of breaking the rules in so many aspects for so many years that it just, you know, I think it's hit a tipping point. And they got warned three days prop like before doing this. Do not attack the event. They did it anyway. So it's like, what, what can we do to help you? And the problem is, is the guys who made the thread rallying support, and I'm just going to check the chapters here. Um, the guys who rallied for the support um, of all the organizations that PVP, none of them have been punished. Like nobody from Avengers group has been punished for any of this. No one in PAX, LR, RAM, all these PVP organizations that play the game and care about the game uh, and even play the game pretty brutally, like shoot on side any players in the community and stuff. None of them have been punished. None of them got warnings or suspensions. It's only the one group that's frequently breaking the rules all the time and don't care about the game. So why would I care? Like, and the problem is, is the thread that got made by the players in these organizations, it just turned into a look at me contest for the guys who did get suspensions and turned out not to be a threat like I already thought to all the other PvP orgs. And again, like I don't want to come across like I don't want clarity. I'm very pro PvP. I'm very open to the open world sandbox that this is and that people share it with and the meta gaming aspect of this. I just think that these guys are, are an exception to that. Uh, and that's why they got cooked. So, and it's like sus you got suspensions. You didn't get banned. Your accounts didn't get closed. Although I imagine they're on their way to that. But you got to slap on the wrist, like just PVP more and try to torment random content creators less. <laughs> it's like not that hard to do. Pretty easy. In many of these cases. And I'm like, I'm not like this, like pro, like treat content creators as if you would any other player. But the reason that these guys are often doing this stuff is just to get a reaction and try to torment some dude who's streaming is facial reaction to stuff like i don't think they're there to le legitimately play the game they're just there to try to torment people and have fun on the internet with it and i get it right like it, you know it, it, it i i can see it i can understand it but you know the the rules are obvious just don't break those specific rules and you wouldn't get punished like the rest of us. Like, do you think these other PVP organizations are never running into content creators? Of course they are all the time. And none of them are getting punished. I wonder why that is. It is no longer about enjoying the game, but rather disrupting it. Stream sniping, pad ramming, firing into armistice zones, or utilizing various exploits to grief others. These are just a few examples of excessive griefing, which we do not tolerate. If you find yourself on a receiving end of this, we are more than happy to investigate, and in cases where it's warranted, we will absolutely intervene. These are all pretty reasonable stances for a CIG to have. It perfectly and clearly outlines what is and is not acceptable. It also properly illustrates their desire to allow players to handle PvP grievances as opposed to stepping in and handling them for the player. 
The issue seems to arise from several players who participated in the attack on the event receiving some form of punishment. I personally cannot confirm this as I do not interact with those people, but assuming they were, it raised some significant concerns and can potentially put CAG down a dangerous road where players begin to weaponize the report system to... Yeah, and this is like the mass reporting. And this is where I'm on like the the other side of this, right? Like if you're a content creator and you're weaponizing reports, you should get the suspension. Absolutely. If there's any proof of you trying to weaponize mass reports, that's it. You should actually get suspension suspended or a suspension. Absolutely. That is the other side of the coin legitimately like that's messed up shouldn't do it shouldn't be able to do it you're trying to create a narrative like and you're trying to use your content creator community to get people punished and abuse the system yeah like that's griefing in my eyes like i find that to be that should actually be punishable and cig should come out about that absolutely um but deal with this stuff the right way but yeah, like it's just, it's hard to be on the other guy's team and like want to root for uh, clarity or, you know, like try to support, trying to find exactly where the line is when it comes to the rules. When I know that the guys that are seeking this don't, don't abide the rules anyways. So... <laughs> It just feels like a scam. Like this whole seeking clarity just feels like a scam. And it's just, you know, a see, come see what we did thread, you know, and the, all the PVP organizations that were concerned about this, guess what? None of them have been punished. None of them got warnings. The only guys who got warnings and punished are the guys guilty of two years of breaking the rules frequently and constantly. And I understand too that some people that played alongside that group that night got punished. Well, that's what you get when you play with the group that has got a long history of breaking the rules. You get associated. You're an accessory to the crime, right? So I just don't think we have this huge problem on our hands. Not yet. And do, do I worry about the future when it comes to those rules? Sure. But... CRG's pretty much proven that they're very much okay with PvP. They're very much okay with this sandbox and organizations going head to head as long as it doesn't cross the line of stream sniping and excessive harassment. So, just don't see it, guys. I don't. Punish players for legitimate actions. This has been a long standing. But sorry, yes. Cook, anyone that tries to file mass reports and weaponizes communities to leverage the reporting system yeah you're the idiot on the other side of that and you should get suspended for that absolutely a concern of mine and it takes a very strong company with a strong vision not to go down this road the reply in the thread created on february 8th 2024 xylo made a response this response did not seem to please the majority of the people from the pvp community Instead of reading it in its entirety, I'm going to give you the most important parts. The first, we still believe in and encourage PvP solutions to in-game conflict. Our commitment to a player-driven universe remains the same. It's important to note that we are not eager to police PvP encounters, and in the vast majority of cases, we prefer players to engage in organic PvP without intervention. And that's like a concern of mine too, right? It's like, we don't want a referee to every PvP interaction in the game. Otherwise, it's just tainted. Uh, it's a big elephant in the room and you're co constantly not trying to cross the line. But I've found in killing thousands of players in the PU that the line is nowhere near if you just play the game properly. It's only when you start tormenting dudes that completely aren't interested in PvP and happen to be streaming at the time and stuff where you can see them frustrated in their reactions. It's those guys you can't torment. And to be honest, like, who cares to do that? And I'm not like pro content creators should have like safety bubbles or anything like that. But there's a niche part of the PvP community, a very specific group of players 
that are interested in purely tormenting content creators who aren't interested in PvP on the Twitch category. That's it. Like those those specific players I just don't care about. Cause like I don't see them competing in PvP uh with the wider community. Like I've fought every PvP group. I'll, sh I'll guess who are the PvP groups I can't fight because they aren't around. It's these guys. So, you know, why would I care? Also, they're like notoriously not supportive of the project at all. So it's just like the project being the game. But I do, I, I do concern myself or I am concerned with... Uh, like CIG over policing PvP encounters, which is why I'm just hopeful. And my understanding is that when these systems get their security updates, meaning like Stanton becomes low sec, uh, there's null security systems like Pyro and stuff. My expectation is if you're in a null security systems, CIG is, a com CIG is completely hands off. No policing, no hand holding no rules like even for content creators null security belongs to the players that are that part that are interested in the pvp absolute warfare aspects of the game and then the high security system could be heavily policed by cig um you know if for all i care because that's not going to be the corner of the sandbox i'm going to care about and then low security i don't think should be policed either um but let the players for example that would have made this event go into their corner of the game which is the high security pocket of systems and let them play in their own little bubble yeah separate to the rest of the guys who understand the risk and that's why i haven't cared about these rules or felt like i'm majorly concerned about this like i'm here to compete man to go head to head with organizations and pilots and pvp it out like i'm here to compete so that's why i'm not concerned about this because this is just about tormenting dudes who aren't interested in pvp who aren't trying to compete and i don't get any dopamine from you know shitting on dudes just trying to mine a rocket yellow you know in the middle of nowhere i get zero joy out of that so what how could i care it's not fun i have way more fun going after the competitive players and shitting on them however there is a line where we will issue warnings, particularly to groups that take it to an extreme, making disruption their primary purpose for playing. The second, we also acknowledge the responsibility on our part to create a universe that self-manages these types of encounters through a robust reputation and law system. Yep. Alongside a variety of tweaks and additions to appropriately balance risk versus reward. As you know, Today, the game is not equipped for a fair balance of player factions, at least not to the degree we intend. And currently, an event weeks in the making can be wiped out with minimal effort. Yeah, so like, and that's the big one, right? Is like when these security systems have, you know, risk and reward, law the law system, factions and reputations and stuff, That'll gatekeep you from being able to do this continuously to the point it's harassment, right? So those gameplay systems are coming and yeah, I just, I just don't care to crusade for this. This has been seen more frequently lately <coughs> with pad ramming and A2 flybys, commonly followed by videos mocking those impacted, all with very little gameplay repercussions. And finally, it's also important to understand that our recent warnings were directed at a specific group that we deemed as more radically impacting the intended alpha experience. Dude, and this is the thing, right? It's the guys who got the warnings, and I heard that some people got it, their suspensions overturned that were just playing with that group on the day. But, like, it's... These warnings were at a direct specific group that they deemed as more radically impacting the intended alpha experience. The dudes that are stream sniping recklessly without care. You know, the dudes that are only attacking these events made by players who aren't interested in PvP. And that's the only thing they're targeting. This group that isn't interested in PvPing with the wider community at all. 
or any of the other competitive PvP orgs, and instead are just trying to roll up these groups of players and streamers. So, like, how can you care? Like, how could I care about this? And, like, I see Zylo's point, man. Like, I do. Like, despite being in a absolute cutthroat death eater in Harry Potter style organization that Shadow Moses is, it's just, you know death when it comes to our organization and pvp i still don't feel like we're at any risk when it comes to the crg like ticket support stuff or you know getting warns warnings or suspensions not worried about it in the slightest because we're not dependent on just doing what this group is doing so i I just don't see it like like i mentioned the group that made the thread or the all the organizations and their leadership that made the thread wanting clarity from cig none of them got in trouble at any point like none of these orgs have been warned or suspended besides a specific group and the group who played with them and even though they got warned not to do it three days before doing it they still went ahead and did it so experience it's just like Lastly, I want to clarify that our current stance is also not permanent. Here we go. Piracy and sabotage have their place in our universe, and we anticipate a more balanced and refined system to accommodate this as the game progresses. Yeah, like null security systems and low security systems could be way more open to espionage, piracy, and sabotage. And they want, like should be completely hands off when it comes to the policing of this from a EULA standpoint. But then in the high security systems, players that are interested in espionage, piracy, and sabotage should just be hands off. Like let the people who are crying about PvP and don't want that experience, let them live in their sims online experience in the high security systems where they have tailored pve experiences and can do whatever the hell they want to in that area right but then be hands off brutal space and memory culture that exists in the low and null security systems like that's how i see it so i just don't care like i said like it, it really comes down to i don't get dopamine out of tormenting new players or inexperienced players it's just not enjoyable for me, so I don't care. Despite a seemingly large amount of PvP-oriented players in that thread being dissatisfied with the answer, I personally found it to be the best he could do without upsetting everyone too much. You've got to understand these developers, whether they like it or not, are public figures. And whatever they say can and will be dissected, analyzed, and used to support or condemn arguments at any time. Xylo could not simply come out and say, yeah, we don't like PvPers going after streamers or events. If you do, you're banned. <laughs> because that would be bogus and infuriate almost everyone in the PvP community. He also couldn't come out and say, grow a pair and deal with it, undocking his consent. Because that would upset the PvE <laughs> Undocking his consent. <laughs> this was the best answer he could give while trying to placate the two very extreme dichotomies of the gameplay spectrum. Yep. PvP and PvE player bases. PvP and PvE are best together. Oh, here we go. For now me, it's going to get juicy. PvP and PvE aren't like oil and water. They're more akin to sweet and savory. While one doesn't mix it all, the other complements it quite well, despite residing on opposite ends of the flavor spectrum. I've always found that games which combine both end up being far more fun and memorable than those that don't. That's why I strongly oppose the ridiculous idea of completely and totally separating these gameplay styles from one another. It's not that I am against high-sec, low-sec divides, but I am completely against one part of the game being mutually exclusive from the other. There will always be players out there who never do PvP and others who never do PvE, and that is totally fine. It is your game, and you should play it how you want. However, Here we go. I want whatever you do, be it PvP or PvE, to have some sort of impact on one another, whether yeah. it is direct or indirect. 
a great ex yeah i like this a lot too like i uh i reference it on a couple other reacts right i love the idea of pvp players being dependent on pve logistics you know and then you can have that symbiotic relationship between organizations that are interested in pve loops and logistics and the pvp groups that require it you know and then that creates good relationships between the different types of organizations that are playing the game for different reasons the glue in the middle of that being an economy yeah so like i i, I like this too i think there could be a good relationship between those two categories if the game mechanics that uh, glued them together existed uh, within the shape of an economy. Example of this would be a cargo hauler in high sec loading up important goods and materials yes. and eventually having to jump it over to low sec for yes. maximum profits. And this happens in EVE Online, like the, the mining and stuff that happens in high sec pays uh, the customers uh, outside or is paid for by customers and null security and low security systems so yeah like and it can go both ways right like high security players can rely on the pvpers to gather whatever resources are only available in the null security systems and then you create that relationship of trade super awesome now we're getting deep i really like this the hauler a pve minded player would benefit from the employment of bringing along some PvP-minded players. The players in low sec may greatly benefit from the material being brought over from high sec and may decide to steal for themselves, or even offer to secure the station he is coming to free of charge because the goods he is bringing are that important to the masses. Those masses may be PvP or PvE focused, but it doesn't matter. It is in everyone's best interest it arrives. This simple scenario has created a story. It has created emergent gameplay. That could never happen with a strict PvE, PvP only rule set. That is why so many games which live by those rule sets feel so hollow and soulless. They're safe, yes. sanitary, and by design uninteresting. And that's what I like, that's what you get when you have games that are protected from this. Like this is the beauty of playing a sandbox mmo right is like you get all those things that buzz just mentioned there's narrative there's the experience the quest givers you're getting quests from are players you know like there's so much to it there's so much sophistication um and it's interesting even when you're not playing the game the game is interesting because you're learning about things that happened while you were offline and how the sandbox changed shape because of these organizations going to head head to head or this aspect of the economy being in a drought or an abundance you know like it's things get interesting the narrative is always changing shape um whereas if it was a tailored experience or you know separated experience then everything's happening according to plan and nothing is interesting so I love that aspect of these games. Additionally, the potential for added danger, even if improbable, will make whatever mundane task a player is undertaking feel more rewarding. Even if there is only a 5% chance of harm in high sec, there is still a possibility, and that possibility adds value to whatever they are doing. PvP isn't griefing. I hear the word griefer thrown around now more than ever. It is possibly a sign of the times where the standard reaction of the modern human male when confronted by a bully is to run and appeal to authority instead of defending <laughs> themselves as God intended. To those Dude, I love I love when Buzz says things like this, dude. Because you can tell in his voice he's like making fun of himself as he says it. I love when he does this. Because you can tell. Any and all PvP interactions they are presented with are viewed as griefing. And yep. the perpetrators are labeled as griefers. Yep. That's simply not true. Gr I might actually turn this uh, to two, 2x speed. Yeah. Or 1.5 at least. Just to speed things up. But he's right. Griefing is a thing. And I would personally define it as somebody using unintended gameplay mechanics to prevent you from actually playing the game. Things such as blocking elevators with gurneys, using the tractor beam inside Grimhex to knock down and harm people, or even ramming pads. 
That is griefing. And even then, my reaction isn't to open a ticket to CIG, but I will often get the boys together and do it right back to them. But even worse. <laughs> the boys... <laughs> the enclave, I'm guessing. <laughs> Am I advocating that you do that? Well, in a way, yes. But I am sure CIG would disagree. And it is probably best to report the legitimate griefers instead. I'm still going to come Dude, back. This rail gun outside of Grimhex looks like griefing. But he's right. Like, everybody labels anything as griefing. And in my experience, griefing is when you're not playing the game. You know, like, griefing is when you're running down in, in League of Legends going 0 and 20 to, like, because you want your team to lose. Where you're not even trying to play the game, you're just trying to break it for everybody else. Um, but instead, in like this Star Citizen game, it's like griefing is just you like the PvP openly uh, and without a thought. You just like to shoot at spaceships, so you're a griefer, apparently. I hate that. I despise that. And Pad Ram the Pad Rammer, though. Meaning I despise when people call it that. Oh, and may even crush that guy in Grimhex with a box, too. But if you are in the game world, minding your own business, and somebody comes up and destroys you, that's just the way it is. You were not griefed, you were destroyed. Fair and square. It doesn't matter if you're at a station, at an event, or minding your own business minding rocks on Lyria. The moment you boot up this game, you're a fair target, and that danger adds value to the world and everything you do in it. That is it this And that could just be separated by security systems. Like, I'm... And the like, and do I am I like a huge fan of the idea that people in high security should be immune to like the PvP experience if they don't want it? Like, I'm not huge on it, but I like I'm just so tired of the debate. I'm so tired of the going back and forth with PvP is griefing. We don't want a PvP. Like, I'd rather just it be clear cut with some transparency that you will not be protected by pvp at all in any aspect in low and null securities systems and then in high security systems you absolutely will be just that way it's transparent you know and we know where the line is and it's not soft in all three tiers of the system because if like say you're policing stream sniping griefing and stuff in null security systems and how the hell is player org wars supposed to go or vendettas or espionage stuff like like how are you going to do that if you're policing that in null security systems too so it's like if you want to make this game as cutthroat as we want it to be and i want it to be then you have to give the players that aren't interested in that their own space and i'll tell you what like there's a lot of the people playing this game you know that want to push that eve 2.0 agenda probably a small part of that right but you know they just want pvp cutthroat everywhere every inch of the sandbox you gotta realize too in eve online i don't think p people are aware of this but you absolutely can get suspended for stream sniping but you're gonna get suspended if you're doing it in a high security and if you're doing it on content creators right like in high security you have to tick those both boxes or just people in high security period um they'll get you if it becomes griefing or harassment but if you're in the other tiered security systems then you're not going to get punished at all um so it's like that in eve it would work in star citizen and i only want this i only want the high security guys to be immune from that experience and given what they want just so that they would like and i know some of my viewers so don't be offended by this just so they would shut up and this argument would stop like i'm just tired and bored of it but i do want you know game of thrones brutality in space um, and I think the only way to do that is to completely separate the community with the guys that are interested in that, and the guys that aren't, because if they don't split them up, then we're going to get that soft policed experience from CRG all the way through, which is where every PVP war battle has to have an elephant in the room. Was there stream sniping? Could, could this be considered harassment, etc. So that's why I want the split. Um, and I think, you know, giving those guys their corner of the sandbox would help in that. Helps me get what I want because they also got what they want in the deal, right? Like two parties have to be happy with the result for a deal to be made, right? So let them have what they want in their corner, you know, and then give us exactly what we want, you know, blood, guts, and gore and all.
in ours, you know? Say these things should be free of consequence? Absolutely not. I do not want players to be able to go about on a crime spree and not answer for it. I want the most extreme punishments for the most extreme crimes. Destroy somebody in UEE space? Lose a severe amount of reputation to be exiled off into Pyro or some other lawless system. Yo, love this. Lose all rights and privileges to the market and be forced to live your life in fear of bounty hunters. And get your gear through scavenging or black market traits. Sure. I want the game to be hard mode for those that want to harm the law abiding. Yes. That, to me, makes... Dude, I... Man, sometimes I love Buzzcut's takes. I... I fucking hate his takes on light fighters. And fighters in general, although I'll give him credit, he's gotten a lot better with it. But, uh, yeah, no, I can see uh, the game designer when he talks about this kind of stuff. So, really cool, really based. It's a game more fun. It makes the choices you make have consequences. And those consequences change how you fundamentally play the game. Jail, in its current state, isn't a very meaningful consequence. People just escape, use marriage to get out immediately, or just log into an alt or go play a different game until their sentence is up. And when they're out, they just start with a clean slate and go commit crimes again. On the other hand, I would absolutely consider targeting another player with the intent to ruin their gameplay experience griefing, even if you're using in-game methods to do it. I actually have a pretty relevant example to give you. Back in 2022, an event similar to the experience was being held. They took sign-ups, got about 60 people together, and set off to do a tour of Stanton on an 890 jump. I snuck in wearing civilian clothing when the ship was docked and loading up. I stored my weapons and equipment in the ship's storage and ran down to the pool. When it was leaving, I put all of my gear on and ran my way up to the bridge. I neutralized the pilots, eliminated the security team, and maintained control of the bridge while our torpedo bombers attacked. Myself and everyone on board, all 60 innocent occupants cool. were lost in the cold, dark void of space. Was this harassment? No. Shortly afterward... I openly claimed responsibility for this action, and the leader of the event got in touch with me on Discord. He asked why I did it. I told him that I'm a Xenothreat sympathizer. He accepted it, and asked me if I would leave him alone. And you know what I said? I said absolutely, and went about my business. So, dude, and you, and I'm sure you didn't get a warning from Sergio or a suspension because you're allowed to attack events. Yeah, it's like when you do all of the other like stream sniping, pad ramming, following server to server harassment stuff, and it becomes repetitive and consistent with the only objectives your org is, has in the entire game, that's when you start getting punished. So it's like, if he can do that, and I've done similar, then what's the concern? I don't get it. They scheduled again, hired more security, and others tried very hard to get me to hit them again. But I knew it would be wrong and unjust to target them again and do something similar. Had I gone after them again and again and continued to ruin the event for everyone else, I would without a doubt consider that harassment and should 100% be punished yes. by CIG. It's so easy you all to you just want assume and say, where the line is. Well, they should hire more security, lol. But you know very well that the reality of SC is that if you want to destroy somebody, it is very easy. And no matter how much security you have, you will very easily ruin that event. All of the power in this game is within the hands of the destroyer and not the creator. Murder is piracy. Another common phrase you see thrown around by automatons masquerading as humans on platforms such as Spectrum and Reddit is murder hobo and how it isn't piracy. I assume the people who use that phrase have been exposed to it from high quality entertainment such as Critical Role and Geek and Sundry and think using the phrase makes them seem more informed. They also hold the erroneous opinion that murder is not a legitimate form of piracy, and that players should instead parlay, come to terms, and go on their merry way, as if the movie Pirates of the Caribbean is a canonical depiction of historical piracy. <laughs> Wrong. Destroying you, taking what is on your ship, and salvaging yeah. whatever remains to be sold to Grimhex is 100% legitimate piracy. Yeah, people need to realize that, right? Like, you're... As you fly around doing whatever you do, they're not, they don't have to abide, the pirates or players, other players don't have to abide some code of conduct, you know, some piracy code. It doesn't exist. The armor you are wearing is worth something. The weapon you are wearing is worth something. The ship 
and the materials and the components that make it up are worth something. You are flying around with value and you are in cold, dark space where people will do bad deeds and take your stuff. Like if I shoot at a ship, the first thing I do is slow down and look at the pilot's corpse. I'm like, damn, is he wearing any loot that I want to loot? Like, welcome to the game. Like, that's what this is. And a lot of the community, hopefully not my viewers, need to understand that, right? Is you're worth something now. Now they're not doing it just for the dopamine of seeing a ship explosion or outplaying someone or beating a, a, a human being. Now there's rewards for it. Um, so, like, people need to be understanding of that. There's no code. I want your ship, your cargo, yep. and your life. I am an outlaw. I will not negotiate with you. I will not give you a chance to escape or log out. Yep. I'm going to destroy you and take everything you worked hard to get. That is a simple fact of Star Citizen life. The people who and that's and that's okay. And should there be reputational like gameplay systems to police that and hinder that and slow that down and make it difficult, like you mentioned earlier? Absolutely yes. But that is legitimate as hell gameplay. That is what the game is made for. Like whether people like it or not, you know, and is the balancing on it perfect? No, but that's in the game. You know, like that is one plus one equals two right now. That's it. It makes sense. That's completely legit complain about this are also the same people that expect pve servers pvp sliders yeah, here we go 100 safe zones and everything else that actively goes against making an mmo an mmo oh good take very good take what they fail to understand is that the dangers they face out in the pu are what will one day place value upon the goods and material they are using or hauling i'm not going to say hire an escort because that phrase really is just a meme at this point but as the game develops, and that hopefully becomes a meaningful and reasonable option for players, I would suggest doing that. But simply trying to get other players to conform and play to how they think piracy should be conducted is disingenuous, because we all know that if they were given the option to pay or be destroyed, they will do everything in their power, outside of fighting back of course, to get around it or exploit the system to avoid it by either logging out, self-destructing, or whatever else they can think of. The people claiming that they would be okay with legitimate piracy are usually liars. They use that as a front to seem more reasonable in their demands. What they really want is a complete and total separation of PvP and PvE players. That would absolutely ruin this game because danger adds value, and value creates gameplay. Weaponized Reports Oh, here we go. There is a genuine concern to be had over a company being heavy-handed or too involved in what players do to one another in-game, within reason. And no, before you get worked up ahead to the comments, I am not talking about inappropriate chat or anything else a reasonable human being would consider inappropriate for a game. But rather, what most individuals on Spectrum and Reddit consider to be inappropriate, which is usually anything they do not personally like or agree with. If a group of players regardless of whether they are on the PvP or PvE side of the fence, witness a company getting involved in punishing players for actions in or out of game, they will, without hesitation and doubt, weaponize it. Trust me on this one. They will not choose to get back at you in the game. No. They will go out of the game and appeal to the company itself to take care of you. That could be a warning, suspension, or even a ban. Despite what some in the PvP community would want you to believe, this is not something that only PvE-centric players will do. I have first-hand experience of PvP-centric players doing yeah. everything in their power to get me and my community removed from numerous games because of our effectiveness within the game. It has never worked. But that did not stop them from trying. I promise you that they will do it here too if CIG is too heavy-handed on this. Why bother destroying your enemy in-game where they can respawn and come back at you when you can get them removed from the game and never have to deal with them again? And this is why I very much want like the support, the the player support system for like, you know, going up against people that are stream sniping, um, excessive griefing, harassment, all that stuff. Only police it in high security and then just be hands off so that people have the understanding that when they jump through these certain gates and leave this pocket of space systems, that they're no longer 
um, in the jurisdiction of CIG and that they're at the complete mercy of the sandbox. Like, that's why I want to give these guys who aren't interested in, uh, you know, the brutal PvP that is to the space MMO culture, give them their corner of the sandbox so that they don't complain about the rest. They don't have a ground to stand on when it comes to arguing for a different game experience if they willingly left those systems. Yeah, it's like give them what they want so that we can have everything we want, is how I see it. To those sorts of people, weaponizing the report system and leading out of game brigades against users or organizations they do not like are perfectly acceptable. And they will stop at nothing until they get their way. The only thing CIG could do is ignore these sorts of people because, thankfully, those sorts tend to find another cause to champion and will move on to it eventually. True metagaming. Here we go. Before people who look like this started to <laughs> apply the word meta to everything and anything, it was used to describe players using out-of-game knowledge to accomplish things in-game that they would not otherwise know. An example of this would be you, the player, having meta-knowledge of the game Fallout and knowing that a plasma pistol could be found in the sewers of the Necropolis and making a straight line towards it at the start of the game. In the context of the aforementioned thread in Star Citizen, it has to do with out-of-game spying, organization infiltration, sabotage, social engineering, and anything else done out of game to gain an in-game advantage. And this is a slippery slope, right? Like, and it's a concern of mine, just how deep this meta stuff's going to go. Am I like, I'm down for the organization, um, like corporate espionage, stuff like that. Um, but when it gets into the creepy real life aspect, then I'm hard against it. Uh, so... It's a fine line. It's a weird subject, very sophisticated to discuss, but uh, I'm supportive of it because that's the space of remote culture. When it, only when it comes to, you know, knocking down sand castles in game and destroying spaceships. When it gets crazy in the real life aspects of it, I'm hands off, not interested. Don't want anything to do with it. I'm here for the spaceships and the space wars, nothing else. This behavior is all very lame, and there is absolutely nothing CIG can do to prevent or punish it. They can, however, mitigate it through intelligent game design and thoughtful decisions when it comes to mechanics, but expecting them to punish or prevent it is not reasonable. This type of player behavior is now more prevalent than ever and can be traced all the way back to EVE Online over 20 here years ago. Here we go. He's covering what I mentioned earlier. Where it became most popular. But it wasn't uncommon for spies to gather intelligence through alt accounts in earlier PvP-centered games such as Dark Age of Camelot or Planetside 1. What EVE okay. did, however, is exasperate and normalize this sort of behavior to the point where it became common practice and an acceptable part of the game. I've always found it quite ironic that PvP players will blame and accuse PvE players of being the only ones who take out-of-game actions to get what they consider griefers removed when the PvP community is just as capable, if not more, due to the competitive nature of PvP and the impact victory can have. We live in a world that is seemingly populated by lunatics, and for some reason, space games appeal to the lunatic fringe. This type of it's behavior true. will continue and become more prevalent as Star Citizen develops and matures as a game. My only advice to anyone out there who leads a community or organizes events is to assume that you are at all times being watched and plotted against, because you most likely are. And that's the way to look, that, that's the sad reality of what this is. That's exactly how you have to treat it is you play a space MMO sandbox game with terrorist, brutal warlords, you know, that have nothing better to do than drift space. So, you know, absolutely need to understand that that is exactly what it is. If you're going to advertise on billboards, Twitter, Discord, your streams everywhere about how this you're doing this grand thing, you better have grand security at the same time. Because you are a grand target for all of these guys. Yeah, and that's the thing. And I don't, and I'm supportive of attacking events and organizations and trying to change the narrative from going according to plan all the time. Because that's what a sandbox MMO is. Um, I just have a hard time sympathizing with uh, organizations that are constantly breaking the rules at every opportunity and don't really care for the longevity of the game anyway. Um, so let's get to the conclusion. Conclusion. 
Xylo has handled this incident in the best way possible. The forums will always be full of PvE versus PvP tribalism. Yep. I only hope that CIG stays the course and maintains the integrity of their product by not giving it to either side. It's important that both styles of play be present and complement each other rather than remaining totally separate. Yeah. Another challenge CIG faced. And that's the thing, right? It's like you can like the I think the answer to all of this is the economy. The separation of systems to give them their space so that they can play in their sandbox and enjoy the experience and then make them dependent on each other through the economy and trade between the two types. Hooey, that's the dream. This is remaining neutral and resisting the inevitable wave of player versus developer behavior that comes from reports of griefing, out of game controversy, and manufactured outrage from both sides of the player base. Star Citizen is on its way to being a great game but it still has a long way to go until the finish line. And its balance of both PvP and PvE will always be integral to its long-term success. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. I read and reply to all of them, even the ones where you call me a dummy who doesn't know anything. <laughs> oh, I love how everyone appears, Buzz. Oh, great, great, great. I love that good video, awesome take, brother. Very good. Uh, so in summary, um, Am I worried about CIG over policing um, the game? Uh, it will depend and I will be kicking and screaming when we start to see what these tiered security systems look like. But you guys know my expectation for that. But am I concerned? No, I'm not. Genuinely, I'm not. So I didn't feel a need to sign on the thread. I don't feel like we have to worry that events can't be attacked. And I think the only group that has to worry about CIG is the group that's constantly been tormenting CIG. Uh, for the last couple of years anyways, and just creating work for them. Um, they're not interested in the wider PvP, so I don't really care, yeah? Um, the meta gaming it's a slippery slope, but it's here. It's been here, and people need to become accustomed to that. Uh, mass reporting should be absolutely punishable. Harsh penalties, if you ask me. And uh, PvP should keep happening. Uh, and the PvE guys should have their corner of space and an economy to trade between the two. Really good take. Um, you can c clearly tell that Buzz has been playing his fair share of open sandbox MMOs. And I love the video. Hopefully that's not too long. It was an hour. His video went for 30 minutes. So not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. Um, on a side note, boys, Master Modes is really getting interesting. I'm just waiting for the PTU to fix the uh, big rubber band desyncs and the hitches. Uh, but you guys will see some probably some Twitch streams and some uh, some more YouTube content when uh, things just settle down and get a bit of a groove uh, when it comes to the performance. But guys, I appreciate you. I know some of you didn't like my last video. It might have been a bit harsh. This one might have been a bit harsh too. But that's what being a content creator is, right? Refining the community and people understanding, you know, what I want from the game and stuff. So. I appreciate you guys for sticking it out. Uh, appreciate the guys for commenting on it. I'll read in your comments. Make sure you guys join our discords. Got two of them. Follow me on Twitch as well. And uh, give me a one, two, three if you got this far. Uh, yeah. Check out Buzz's video. I'll put it in the description. There's a couple of videos he's got coming that I wanted to react to as well. Um, specifically on the FPS side of things. So appreciate him for his video. One, two, three in the comments, boys. Love ya, and I'll catch ya next time. Peace.